Richard Feynman is a hero to millions around the world, from physicists to ordinary people like Bill Gates, Thomas Frank, and others. He inspired me in more ways than one to become a physicist. I even style my hair to match his. The man who said the first principle is you must not fool yourself, what if he may have fooled the whole world through a colossal fib? I think I got three patents. I don't know what they are anymore. Three patents have my name on it. Did Feynman forget? Did he fool himself? Or was Richard Feynman a liar? Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I read all of his books. I read all the books about him. And I even went and tried to delve into some of the work that he did as a graduate student, completely over my head. Whoosh! He was so far ahead of his time. It seemed like he came from another planet. And I think I can safely say that uh, nobody understands quantum mechanics. In one of his books, this one, surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman, he allegedly received not one, not two, but maybe as many as three patents. Patents about advanced technology stemming from his work in the Manhattan Project. Now, was he lying about these patents? Because it turns out we can't actually find any records of those patents. And these patents, if true, would be colossally important. They would rely on all the technology that he produced as a young scientist. Now, during those times, he was renowned for his exploits, even encouraging the eye of the government. Feynman even drew the attention of the Federales when he cracked many of the safes containing the nuclear secrets that the scientists, including Feynman, were uncovering and unraveling in no almost record time during the early part of the 1940s. The race was on to build an atomic weapon. It was encouraged by none other than Albert Einstein. This technology could result in improvements to things that we take for granted, transportation, energy generation. Millions of such releases of energy that make up this new source of power. Most patents don't ever make a penny, let alone the sumptuous sums that Feynman was perhaps envisioning. He allegedly sold his patents for a dollar to some military G-man. But again, we have no records of this. Now, his books are bestsellers and inspired millions around the world. He was a gifted lecturer. And according to Bill Gates, he is the best teacher that Bill never had. Such a great example of how he could explain things in a fun and interesting way. Feynman explained the strange theory of light and matter known as quantum electrodynamics that governs electric and magnetic fields and their attraction and their repulsion from one another. He invented so-called Feynman diagrams. The Feynman diagrams are an incredibly powerful technique for representing the interaction between particles and fields. The Feynman diagram just consisted of a set of straight line tracks, which were supposed to be individual particle tracks, and joined at, 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 at vertices where the two or three lines would intersect. And each vertex corresponded to an interaction, and each straight line corresponded to a particle track. And then you had propagators, which were telling you the probability amplitude for the particle to move from A to B. And then instead of a path integral, you had just a sum over the propagators. And that was supposed to give you the answer. And the amazing thing was that it did, that the amazing thing was that this very simple diagram method gave you the right answer. He discovered the underlying cause of the Challenger disaster against all odds, coming to the conclusion that it was NASA's fault for pushing a launch too soon on a cold, fateful, frigid January day. They had many, many warnings that there was something wrong. It wouldn't be enough that he just came up with the idea of nanotechnology. Dr. Feynman clarified the topic that there's a plenty of room at the bottom, which means that the critical point is scale. Of quantum computing. This particle's moving around at temperature T, so it pushes on the walls, it has pressure, it has all the thermodynamic quantities, but it's only one molecule. He didn't have to fib. He already had his Nobel Prize. Why would he have to boast about patents that he never had? As he said, the first principle is you should not fool yourself. The second principle is that you are the easiest person to fool. And surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman. He talks at one point about how all the scientists were asked to write down any idea, no matter how potentially obvious it could be. There I was. Some new ideas were needed. OK, so I started to think of new ideas. Involving nuclear technology. The government would then go off and patent it. Now, Feynman says this is insane. 
He'll be talking to them all day with endless ideas of what he could do with a nuclear reactor, such as the type that he was working on as part of the Manhattan Project. He could patent a nuclear submarine, a rocket, an airplane, in addition to the bomb, which of course they wouldn't let him patent. He claims in the book that he wound up getting a patent for an airplane and a rocket. Nowadays, Google Patents makes it incredibly easy to search for patents going way, way back. But as hard as you look, you can't find any patent issued to a Richard Feynman. And yet he describes it in such painstaking detail. He gets a call, long distance, where some military G-man wants to talk to him. And they're gonna develop a nuclear-powered airplane. And they say his name is on the patent. He has to testify and sign off on it that he transfers the technology to the military. I'm not taking your stuff. Okay, the government is. He claims he got three patents on obvious things. I think I got three patents. I don't know what they are anymore. Three patents have my name on it. Maybe he was mistaken. It was certainly something that could be patented, and I don't think he would make the whole story up. But it seems odd. The painstaking detail he goes into, such as receiving a dollar from some military guy, which he then uses to buy chocolate chip cookies for everybody in the laboratory. And why would he make such a thing up? Maybe the patents were actually granted, but his name was taken off or never issued to him. Maybe he was considered so much of a pain because of his exploits, cracking safes, and being a curious character and a wise guy at Los Alamos that the government didn't think he was the trustworthy steward of such advanced technological applications. The way the patent process works is often a little bit hard to understand. They're interesting to get your intellectual output out there, but most scientists would rather publish a paper and give a talk or give a presentation rather than actually get expectation of some monetary windfall from their patents. Now it turns out you can find a Richard Feynman with numerous patents in Google patent search, except there's a name in front of it, Carl, Carl Richard Feynman. So there is a Richard Feynman with multiple patents, but it's Richard Feynman's son, Carl, not the elder Feynman, the Nobel laureate. We compare this to Einstein. Einstein had many patents, including refrigerators, electromagnetic pumps, sound reproduction devices, and light intensity self-adjusting cameras. He did so much that it's hard to think of Einstein as a mere theoretical physicist. So, was Feynman jealous? You be the judge. Was Feynman fibbing? Seems to be contradictory with principle. Did his memories linger and grow? Or was he maybe just jealous of his old buddy Albert Einstein? Now I turn it over to you. Which patent of Feynman's do you wish actually existed? Maybe a nuclear-powered rocket or two? Leave a comment below. And don't forget to visit my website, briankeating.com, to subscribe to my twice-monthly email list.